Welcome to Russ Chandler Stadium at McNeese Falls Park right here on the campus of Georgia Tech University. Today, the third game of day three of the tournament. They see fans who are barbecuing and doing some tailgating from Alabama State University as they are coming on to cheer on the Hornets, who are the number one seed out of the East. Why well, I'd have to see those ribs, Coach? I don't know why. Man, because I'm hungry now. <laughs> the Hornets getting ready to do battle as uh, they get ready to take on and try to win this game against Florida A&M. A tight game between these two teams yesterday. And now for the Rattlers, they will have to beat Alabama State twice to get to the championship. While the Hornets, they only have to win one time. And if they win today, they won't have to worry about playing tomorrow they will advance to the championship game on Sunday. Hi, everybody. Santoria Black along with the Hall of Fame coach, Roger Kador, bringing you today's ball game between Florida A&M and Alabama State. For the Rattlers, uh, this is new territory for them as far as in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. No stranger to tournament play for Alabama State. It's the old guard trying to get back to this NC2A tournament once again under a legendary coach. There they are doing that. Boy, what a beautiful sight. Uh, uh. The lane view of here, a backdrop of uh, a Russ Chandler Stadium. I tell you, it's beautiful. But you're right, Alabama State is is uh is going in there and doing good. Absolutely. Starting lineup here for Alabama State or for Florida A&M: Ty Jackson, Ty Hanchi, Jared Weber, Jan Michael Bastardo, Healy Cleanup, Sebastian Greco, Joseph. Pirini and Will Brown, then Adam Hater-Mota, Jalen Niles, and Raylan Wagner will be on the mound for Florida A&M. For the uh, Rattlers, their biggest thing here, they got to get started early. They cannot afford errors, and they've got to get timely hitting. Oh, yeah, and they better get good pitching also. Yeah. We know Alabama State is going to be aggressive, and we know they're going to score some runs. So that's a given. Florida's got to minimize, minimize all of that and hope to get themselves in good offensive situations. Absolutely. And, you know, I think in this ball game, when you start talking about getting into the deeper here into the tournament, you know, teams, you know, it, it's the same routine for them. You know, you try to get in, you play the game, you go on for the next day, you get your team off your feet. The Florida A&M, they just played at 9 o'clock this morning. Yeah. And they were flat, as the coach mentioned, but they got by. Yeah. They got by because Prairie View appeared to be flat also. Talk they about one, one scrappy. They were scrappy. Yeah. One to nothing. That's really a low-scoring ball game when you think about how well Florida A&M hits the ball. Yeah. Ty Hanchi, or I should say Ty Jackson, will start things out here for the Rattlers of Florida A&M. A game against Alabama State. Jackson, he had a couple of big hits in the ball game, and this shot to the shortstop for Alabama State, and that's going to be... Tyler McIntosh, and the first out has been recorded. Good swing on the first pitch. I have no problem if he, he gets, gets a good, solid swing. Hit the ball pretty good right, right at the shortstop. Ty Hanchi now will come to the plate. Hanchi was hit by a pitch in the last game they played against the Hornets. Here's a shot in the air, and it's going to go back. It's going to go a little bit away, but the center fielder right there to take control of that. And we have two away. Ball went a long way to say he didn't swing that hard. Absolutely. And they're going to have to, they're not going to have, they're going to have to make sure that they have confidence at the plate. You can't be afraid to put the bat on the ball. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, you talked to Coach Shoup, and he said, we have got to make sure that we make contact. We can't just watch the ball. Right, can't watch. You can't go up there taking a bunch of pitches. And then you put yourself in the hole, you know? Here's a pitch. And there for a strike. <clears throat> Jared Weber up to bat. At first game against Texas Southern, he was three for five. Had one strikeout. That pitch in there for a strike. I think Weber got the hit that drove in the run. That was against uh, Prairie View earlier today. Yeah, Absolutely. So he got the most important hit that in game one. Here's the pitch. 
outside for a ball. Starting pitcher for Alabama State, Shadai Kolon. 3-2-5 ERA. He's 5-0 on the season. Here's a shot. And it'll go right to the second baseman, Randy Flores. And that will retire Florida A&M. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the first inning. Alabama State coming up to the plate back after this. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. Back here at Magnese Baseball Park here in Atlanta, Georgia, the Midtown area. And the Florida A&M Rattlers playing their second game of today. Their starting lineup, Randy Flores, Kyler McIntosh. So that's Alabama State, rather. Randy Flores, Kyler McIntosh, Eon Motas, Jack Hay. That's one of the coach's Ooh. players. <laughs> Ali LaPred, Corey King, Christian Lopez, Trenton Jamison, Jamal George, and Shadon Colon on the mound for Alabama State. For the Florida a and Rattlers, their biggest thing here is, is that, you know, you played a game, you know, a few hours ago. When you get ready to, after a game like that, where, again, it was really just a one to nothing game, played flat in that contest, the biggest thing that coaches say is that you got to get the players off their feet. You got to get them off their feet, you know, because normally, again, you, you're asking them to do something that's not normal mm -hmm. for them to yep. do all of this. And so you want them off their feet because when they have to play big game, they could rest and then go to the game. You know what I'm saying? Three games in 24 hours. Here is the pitch. That eating pattern is a little off. So that means you're asking that body to work in a way to, to, to digest this food. You got me? Mm -hmm. and, and, and restore some energy. That's a hit. Here's a shot and just past the outreached arm of Jalen Niles, and Alabama State is on with a hit. Didn't hit that ball hard, but he had the bat hit out in front, and he got it pulled through the hole. Not a bad piece of hit in there. Now we got to see if they're going to be aggressive. Uh, Florida State, Florida, uh, fam, you catch your throws really good. Matter of fact, he nailed a couple of people yesterday. Throw back to first, not in time. There's a lot of things that happen, especially later in the tournament, during the course of the game, that may not show up in the box score, but ends up being one of the uh, maybe pivotal points in the contest that decide a game. Yeah. Here's a shot by McIntosh, and it's going to be foul. He took that one on a ride, and it hit the uh, indoor football facility that's out in left field. It's just a little out in front of that one. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, Charles, you know, a little bit more. And uh, to the right, man, and it would have been a 2 nothing ball game. Anything pulled down the left field line is not going to stay fair. I've been watching, and I'm looking at some – if I look at the field – they widened it more to the right field than they did to left field. So that's one of the reasons the balls, you got to hit it on the line for it to get out to the left field. The pitch foul back. Randy 
Randy Flores in the tournament. We struggled at the plate. 0 for 7 at the plate. Does have a run. Kyler McIntosh there. It's good to see Flores get on base. First hit of the tournament. Mm -hmm. But he's hit the ball well. It just hadn't fallen in. Yeah. You know, Santoria, you mentioned three games in 24 hours. The good thing for FAMU uh, coming into this game, uh, they only used two pitchers this morning in, in the game against the Prairie View. Man, that's, that's really to their advantage, Coach, when you're talking about not being – or not having to go to the bullpen as much. Yeah. And the thing is, we I want to get back to pitching. Who is to say the ones they had – the quality that they have that they didn't use? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's really – you want to have them – quality you want to have sitting over there. Here's a pitch. Swung on and hit in the left field. Foul once again. Well, Alabama State, man, and Florida a and had a classic. <laughs> yes, it did. Nine to eight, five runs in the ninth inning by Alabama State. Flores actually scored a run. He uh, walked, and that's what started. Yeah, he the had walk. that walk, and that was it. Here's a shot. And caught by Ty Jackson. Matos now at the plate for Alabama State. Day one of the tournament, Matos able to get a single and a double. Scored a couple of runs in that game against Prairie View and struggled just a little bit against uh, Florida A&M yesterday. Well, maybe you get on track today. That's why it's always a new day. Yep. And you have to be able to put yesterday behind you. You can't bring it back. Yep. It's it. beautiful God created it that way. <laughs> well, if you, had, if you had a long memory where you didn't forget all of the bad stuff would be really miserable. Well, they got people that some of them don't want to forget that their life is miserable. Mm -hmm. Well, if Alabama State loses this game today, we'll have baseball tomorrow, a deciding game between these two teams. Here's a shot. Nice shot to the third baseman and a double play. Five, four, three, double play to end this inning. Let's see, the coach not going to argue this. First inning, he's going to let it go. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. We now go to the top of the second. No score between the Rattlers and the Hornets. It's the 2023 Swag Baseball Tournament live from Atlanta. join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose.
Getting ready to start the top half of the second inning between the Rattlers and the Hornets. 2023 SWAC Baseball Tournament. Santoria Black along with the Hall of Famer Roger Kador. Coach, when you start looking at, you know, everything is about small victories during the course of the game. And if you're Florida A&M, especially defensively, the way that Alabama State hits the ball, the first inning was a victory. That's right. It's about small victories. I like the way you put it because getting out, making routine plays, all small things. Taking pitches off the plate, it's no big thing. It's a small thing. Jan Michael Bistardo on the, at the plate, the right fielder. Coming into the game, he's hitting 379. 58 hits, 45 RBI, 10 home runs. And a little equipment adjustment. Catcher is uh, being attended to by the equipment manager for Alabama State, or one of the coaches, I should say. Mm -hmm. The catcher has a lot of stuff that they got to wear. Yeah, oh, having a little yeah. technical technical difficulties there with the walkie-talkie. You know, they're talking to the catcher's ear now. Oh, okay. Start off from Flor Myers, Florida. Right hand hitter. That pitch missing for a ball. So now, Shadai Colon is behind in the count. And he gets a strike. Championship game Sunday. 12 noon, should say uh, 1 p.m. <clears throat> rather, 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 Central, and the starter will take a walk to start here in the top half of the second inning. The 63% scoring rate exists when you walk the lead off, man. And we saw what walking the lead off man has done in the course of this tournament. Right, exactly, it's done damage. Sebastian Greco now coming to the plate. Greco two, hitting 293 coming into this game. Played in 42 games, starting in 39, 58 RBI. 13 home runs. He leads this lineup in home runs, leads a team in home runs. Not bad. Some of these guys may get the opportunity to play at the next level. And one of the things that uh, I know I talked to a couple of guys who are here that talk about scouting players, they, it's such so much more than what they do on the field now. Yeah, oh yeah. With the analytics and all of that, oh yes. <clears throat> and the thing that's gonna hurt a lot of, a lot of kids from, I hate, well, don't wanna say small school, but in general, they, they only have 20 rounds now, mm -hmm. where it used to be 50. So you got 1,500 some kids not going to get an opportunity anymore. And that's a lot. It's a lot of kids. Yeah. Just outside. <clears throat> so college should benefit some, you know, and particularly junior colleges. I think baseball probably has the best rule for – student athletes and for kids this one missing for a ball and that is the second walk of this inning coach when it's cut down that many rounds how difficult is it to find that diamond in the rough now uh, you're right it's th that diamond in the rough rough now maybe goes away unless you can find a guy from the 15 through the 20 round that nobody thought much of in a small town America. That's where you're gonna find them. It's gonna be tougher everywhere else because they're gonna be over scouted in the cities and areas, the power five conferences. They're gonna over scout those guys because they can't afford to make a mistake there. So small town American guys gonna be overlooked to an extent and that's where the scout who's got a keen eye and the organization who believe in the scout or take some of those players. 
You know, Charles, we've been around, you know, SWAC sports a long time. You know, we've seen football, basketball, baseball, softball, you name it. And that's one of the things that you're starting to see scouts they're more cognizant now of some of the smaller schools because, you know, look, you see, you know, Tony Romo, he went to school at, what, Eastern Illinois or Delaware mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you see all these guys who went to small schools who end up play, having fantastic careers. And so now they're much more cognizant, it seems like, of that. That's yeah. right. Yeah, very intentional in terms of where they go and, and, and who they find. So uh, it puts a lot of pressure on the scouting departments. Oh, yeah. Had Deion Sanders stayed in the swag, he would have helped a lot of football players. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and I think that's another dynamic is the attention, you know, whether, you know, people agree or disagree on whether he left or not, I think is the, the attention that he brought the conference as a whole was great for all sports because right. you saw a lot more engagement on social media with student athletes, a lot more engagement because of what he was able to do. Here's a shot in the left field. And this is going to be Pierini, and that's his. That's the first out. <laughs> Will Brown coming up to bat. Will Brown in the game against Alabama State. Had a triple and then a single. I want to give the grounds crew a, a, a shout out because all the games been played, they've really kept this field looking good in tip top playing condition. It's not easy. Oh, man. When you're playing that many games on the field. You know, that, I think that's a great point when you start looking at what it takes as this pitch is in the dirt, what it takes for. Uh, you know, a field to be maintained during the course of, you know, 15, 20 games that you'll play in the course of a tournament. I mean, it's just, in, you know, incredible what they've been able to do. And they spend a lot of time out there during those breaks, getting the field ready and mm -hmm. making sure everything is, they drag the field in the middle of the game. Mm -hmm. So really is a, a lot of hard work that people put into this. Well, the work is, especially the mound in the, in the home plate area yeah. where you got the biggest uh, – Damage to being done. Yep. Hitters digging in, pitchers pushing in and stepping in the hole. They got to keep all of that ready. Yeah, that takes a lot of time. And here is a walk by Will Brown. And now the bases are loaded with Rattlers. Well, I got to give a, a Vasquez credit. He's got his bullpen going. You can't afford to let a guy get you in trouble with walks. Because you can't defense one. him. You, yep. There's no defense for walks. Third consecutive, or I should say third walk this inning. That in there in the inside half of the plate for a strike. And on the, uh, I should say, in the bullpen for Alabama State is Joran LeBoy, and we saw him yesterday. Yeah, the bullpen, another left in the bullpen. That one misses to the inside. But he's got eight boy lefty out here, so that's that's why we'll see lefties coming in, warming up, and doing whatever. Yeah. Swung on and hit to the shortstop. Could be a double play here. And double play. Six. Pitcher's four, best three. friend. And you talk about getting out of a jam. A six four three double play to end the inning. All right, no walks, no runs, no no runs, no airs. Two men left on base. We now go to the bottom of the second inning. No score between Florida A&M and Alabama State.
back here at McNeese Baseball Park here in Atlanta, Georgia, on the campus of Georgia Tech. There you see some of the Chevrolet folks who are engaging with the fans here today at the ballpark. Jack, hey! Let's make That's some play. Hay today. <laughs> Thank you. That's why you're so valuable, Centauri. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, hey, he had heck of a day against Prairie View and then uh, had a walk, and then he scored a run against uh, Florida A&M. But he had a pretty good day. at the. He had a couple of walks. Yeah, and a here, couple of walks. You're right. And here's the thing. Both times that Jack K walked, he scored. scored. <laughs> yep. That's your pick to click, right, Coach? <laughs> pick to click. Pick to click. Swung on and miss. And Jack Hay was cut down. Now Ali LaPred will come to the plate for Alabama State. This shot straight mm. up in the air by LaPred. Looks like it'll come down to Niles and he gets the catch. One pitch, one swing, and he gets an out. Got four pitches and two outs, so he gets some good mileage out of his pitches. You know, we talk about that, and you know, you can keep that pitch count down in the middle innings. You're in good shape. We saw yeah. that a little bit yesterday with Grambling. Saw it today, this morning too. Uh, both pitches, Texas uh, with Prairie View and uh, and FAMU, so. <clears throat> Both of those pitchers were able to go deep into the game. Fortunate. Let's see where it hit him. Said it hit him right in the elbow. Yeah. Well, it just skimmed him. But you know what? He took it like a man. Yep. I'm sure someone is out there. What you What you mean taking it like a man? He got hit. He didn't hurt. <laughs> You know, there's a difference between hurt and injured. That's right. Big difference. Coach, you made a point. Rub some dirt on it, huh? Rub some dirt. <laughs> oh, my players loved it, though. They took get dirt and rub it. They would do it because they, they understood. We took everything serious, but there were times when somebody, you know, when somebody really got hurt, sting, when it was stinging them. Yeah. And they didn't want to say, rub some dirt, get some dirt. They went out, dirt, 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 dirt. <laughs> Once the guy put the dirt, then it stopped. <laughs> right now, the pitcher, Raylon Wagner, is behind in the count. And he loses this guy here. Another walk. Well, so... So you get Corey King, he was hit by a pitch. And then you got to walk. And now you got to walk here by Lopez. At some point, it's going to come back home to, to haunt you <clears throat> against a good team. Oh, yeah. That pitch to the outside. Well, Coach, when you're deep into the tournament like this, if you're the team that only needs that one win to get into the championship game, you, you really play with a sense of urgency to make sure that you're not playing on Saturday because now you're an elimination game if you do. Right. Yeah. But you don't want to put too much pressure on your kids. Yeah. You try to keep everything in the natural flow. So they can operate the way they are accustomed. Mm -hmm. You see, when you sometimes coaches can take kids out of the flow, and they add pressure and they press. You got me. Here's Ooh. a shot right to the first baseman. Went off his leg. Ball is rolling around, and they can't get anybody. Everybody is safe. That was hit pretty hard right there. <clears throat> And this is why I say when kids swing at the first strike, look at that, hit it hard. 
Oh, man. Yeah. It was a race to get it to second. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, that was a shot. And that is going to be a base hit. This is where Alabama State now earned their money. Where other teams, where the players maybe get jammed with a shot, take pitches. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they do. Maybe this is why they're the number one seed. We get to see it here. Got the bases loaded, two outs. Swung on and missed. See, he over swing there. The swing was, that's not what Coach Vasquez wants him to do. There you Puts go. One down the third base line. Fumbled yeah. a little bit, but they're able to get out of a jam. No runs, one hit, no errors, three men left on base. Lots of players, lots of runners left on base. We now go to the top of the third with the score. Nothing, nothing. Back after this. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal's going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. 5G boss mode activate. Smile, you're on Cricket. Back here at McNeese Ballpark here in Atlanta, Georgia, on the campus of Georgia Tech University. And once again on the mound for Alabama State, Shaddai Colon. And the first batter up for the Hornets will be Adam Hader Moda. I'll make that Jalen Miles. Miles from Tampa, Florida. Florida A&M, they are trying to push this to deciding game tomorrow here at the ballpark. Shot down the first baseline foul. Of course, a, an automatic bid into the NC2A tournament is on the line. And there's always speculation about where the SWAC will go as it relates to the automatic bid. A lot of it is regional now. Yes. Right Swing now, on. they've got them. They've got Alabama State winning, projected to go to uh, Florida, where? Gainesville? Gainesville? Yeah. Ty Jackson now coming to the plate. Or Tallahassee is one of the two schools. Was the good. On foul. Coach, I wanted to come back to the uh, point you're making about the yeoman work that the grounds crew is doing and the work that they've mm -hmm. done around the mound, especially in regards to that landing area mm -hmm. for the pitcher. How important is that? Oh, my goodness, because this one's straight up in the air. Back on it is the center fielder. And Matos with the catch. 
All right, go ahead, Coach. I'm sorry. Introduce you here, though. Ty Hanchi coming to the plate now for Florida A&M. Yeah, Charles, uh, you see, because everybody have a little different landing point. And you this one straight to the first baseman to retire. We'll Florida resume. A&M. <laughs> no, it, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Now we go to the bottom of the third inning. No score between these two teams. Back after this. All right, bottom of the third inning coming up. Little bit of a wind today. More wind, I would say, today than there has been in the past couple of days. And the, that's about 74, 75 degrees. Just gorgeous. Man, really, really nice weather. Charles Bishop, I know he had a question. Uh, we're going to get back to that here in just a second. Here's the first pitch, and it's in there for a strike. Charles, take it away, brother. Yeah, I was going to ask Coach Kidder in regards to uh, the yeoman work the ground crew have been doing with the field, but especially around the mound and that pitching landing area, how important is it that they keep that uh, uh, steady? I think it's really important to do it because everybody, whoa. It's a fair ball. And he'll get into second base. Each pitcher have a different landing spot, so they have to work that out because the first kids could get hurt. Let's see it here. Got a fly ball. The sun has played havoc out there today. Yeah. Sudden had a outfield that dropped the ball. Oh my. Yeah, he was a good couple of feet from there. Yeah. And it goes over the fence over there by the bullpen. So Alabama State. And we we found out, always try to find out where's the sun area. And then we try to tell our kids, find an angle that will allow you to get, still be able to catch the ball and shield the sun with your glove, which is still the best way to do it, to be honest with you. But yeah, the, the landing spot, everybody finds a little different. If you notice where he's starting on the rubber, the pitcher is way, okay, he's, he's on the left first base side, but his landing is more See, he's more to the left side of, well, the right, we would say, left. But the other guys are more to the center. So they have to fix it so when people are landing, they find a sweet spot and have a safe haven for, for planting. There's a nice bunch. He's going to have to hurry, and he does get him at first base. You cannot run that ball. It's amazing. No matter how close you are, and if they zip it there, they get you. I want to go back to that hit Flores had. They still have not awarded him a hit. 
Well, it is a hit. It is a hit, but they haven't awarded it to him yet, but I'm just going to put it down as a single. Oh, yeah, you can't. Anytime you lose the ball in the sun and you don't put a glove on it, you can't penalize the fielder. You heard the pitcher. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You got me. Yeah. Uh, the pitcher get penalized, but not the fielder. Because even if it happened in the big leagues, it's a hit. That's right. So we know in the collegiate level, we got to let it go. Ian Matos up to the plate for Alabama State. And for Matos, hitting 358 on the year. He's played and started in 57 games. One of three players that have done that in this lineup. 212 played appearances. Seven home, I should say, nine home runs. And here's a shot behind the dugout. Fam, you is willing to give up the run if you hit this to short and second. Now they're coming in, and they're only doing it because they have two strikes. Normally, with with with, with this one strike, no strike, they would play back. That pitch missing for a ball. So the count is even at two and two, with one out. You could tell when kids been coached to do it right. Walk off a third, right? He's not panicking. He's doing walking. You know, and it's, it's, if you see a kid start running off of that, they hadn't done it. You can't run off of that. You have to walk mm -hmm. because it allows you to go forward or go backward. If you start running, you're only thinking about getting back. In the dirt. Look at that. There you go. There you and go. And he's safe at home. There, if he did it right, that's why he's safe. See, a lot of people were not paying attention to that. I pay attention to it because it's important. That pitch got away from him, and that was ball four. We won a, a conference championship with a ball that got away less than that because the kid did it right. So Matos with a walk. Something that will never show up in the scorebook, mm -hmm. him doing his fundamental right over there at third base. And I talked about it just before it happened, yep. that we, he was doing it right. We were just talking about fundamentals at the end that don't show up in the scorebook. Yeah. And look at this, your boy, boy Jack hey. Hay. He's making hay. Yeah, fundamentals that don't show up in the book. Those are the small things. Two and hits and a walk. What, and that's part of him building a championship team. Because there are days you're going to have to win the one-run game. You got me? Yep. You can't always hit it with the home run. For Alabama State in this half of the inning, two hits and a walk. <laughs> Ali LaPred, who popped out to the shortstop back in the last inning. And it is one to nothing for Alabama State. They strike first. I can't charge uh, some about. I know I'm coaching up here, but it's more than coaching. I'm teaching the audience who want to listen and hear this. Yeah. Because they want to know. They can't see it, and they once they see it, then they say, "Oh, I know now why he's saying this." You know. So I'm working hard to please my audience. That's what it's about, please the audience here in good shape. And that pitch in there for a strike. But Pred, of course, the senior. <laughs> Trying to get on base. There are two aboard right now. Jack Hay at first, Ian Matos at second. That pitch missing for a ball, it's three and one. So now you start looking at uh, Raylan Wagner, and he's fallen behind in the count. He's got just one walk in this inning, two in that last, well, hit by a pitch and a walk in that last inning. And you don't want to put a runner on just like that. Well, you know, he start putting the runners on. You, you, you're asking for trouble. You got one out. And bases loaded.
and there will be a meeting at the mound. It's, and it's not like he's going to the to the uh, bullpen because there's no one warming up. Yeah, right now the bullpen is empty for Florida a and I'm thinking he can wish he can squeeze a couple more in and out. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. And you have to think that way because you know he's limited. And if he can keep the, keep the, the, the score close, then he'll probably go there. Well, of course, with the SWAC Baseball Championship, it ends the championship season in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And you turn your attention to summer meetings and summer recruiting and summer budgeting and just all those things that uh, you do to get ready for the upcoming fall. And once fall comes, get ready for volleyball. And we see some of the Southern fans that have stuck around and great turnout by the Alabama State fans as well who are tailgating with rib tips and <laughs> Like some beans and oh all kind of good goodness. stuff. Cut it off, Santana. Oh, Centuria. Wagner with the pitch. Swung on, and this one is hit deep in the left field. Corey King giving this one a ride, and it is caught. Jared Weber all the way back to the track, but a run scores. Matos comes in from third. Jack Hay moving over to third base. And we have a two to nothing ball game. See, I like the fact that he was ready to swing. That was a deep swing, as a matter of fact. That ball is not carried at all. You know what? At all to left. You know why it doesn't carry to left? That building, John and Mary Brock. Yeah. Football facility is keeping whatever it is that's you know, is is blocking it. Yeah, it's blocking the jet screen. The urban jet stream goes to right center. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, Corey King gave that thing a ride. Had that ball been hit to right field, it would have been way out of there. Christian Lopez, who had a walk back in the second inning, up to the plate now. Swung on and missed foul. Junior from San Diego, California. Lopez hitting 375 in the tournament. Three for eight. He's got a couple of doubles. Four RBI, one strike, one walk. And here's a shot. And once again, this is going in the hands of Adam Hader Motor to retire the side. All right, so for Alabama State. Two runs, two hits, no errors, and two men left on base. We now go to the top of the fourth inning. Fam, you coming up to the plate. Weber, Bastardo, and Grecker coming up back after this. And back here at uh, McNeese Baseball Park here in Atlanta, Georgia. Santori Black along with the coach. And, of course, coach, you know, we start here in the fourth inning for Florida A&M. They've got to make sure that they don't allow any more runs here in this inning because they're down 2 to nothing right now, which is not insurmountable. But they have to be careful. They have to be careful because 
Alabama State is not through scoring. That's right. And, uh, and Florida, I think, does have some limitation with their ability to score. But we also are concerned about that bullpen. What can they bring out of there that can give the quality that it takes to stop an Alabama State? Jared Weber at the plate right now. He is ahead in the count. Down the first third baseline, rather foul. There's that's something not that, a bad idea there. That's right. There's something that happened yesterday is there was a bunt that really kind of rolled the line, and you saw players disciplined enough to get away from it because at the last minute it went foul. That's right. And a lot of fields that are well manicured the way this one is, uh, those balls usually don't go foul. Mm -hmm. But that one did yesterday, which I was a little surprised, to well, be honest with you. Part of it, and you see, and this is something that the ground crew has done a great job of, is and this ball goes a rod. But you see the grounds crew and how flat the dirt is. And what I mean by that is, is that they do a great job of leveling everything out so well that you don't really see a lot of divots where a ball can go left or right. It's really flat going down the first and third base line. It's called grade. It's graded. Yeah. Uh, and they, they probably use the telescope and everything to make sure everything is just right. And that's part of being in the ACC, yeah, Power Five Conference. We spare no expense when we make everything right for our student athletes. Of course, if you are in the South, you play baseball more year-round than you do in the North, where I'm from. Yeah, because it's just cold. Cold is putting it lightly. Well, you know, when I was at home at Christmas, the actual temperature was somewhere around. A balmy 13 below zero. <laughs> and the windshield was 31, 32 below zero. I so, was in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, which is not too far from Milwaukee. Am I correct? Uh, about uh, six, seven hours. Okay. Well, I was there February 2nd through the 4th because we went had the Hall of Fame induction there. Oh, you talk about cold. Yes, Lord. Oh, this was cold. <laughs> oh, my God. Santoria, did you say 31 below? That was the wind chill. 31 below. The actual temperature was 13 below zero. Bless yes, sir. Your, bless your heart. Oh, <laughs> It was 16 below in Omaha. Yeah, that's about right. Wind chill. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? We had a great time. The people in Omaha showed us a great time. And they did it right. They really did it right. So shout out to the people of Omaha. And they know how to, you know, they've been doing the World Series. Dance. Oh, yeah. So they're aware how to make college baseball people feel good. Yeah, I tell you what, Charles, if you go into weather like that, you know, if you're not used to it, and we're not used to it. I mean, my wife and I, we've been in Louisiana for a long time. Here's a shot to the shortstop, and that's going to be McIntosh throw over the first for the out. And, Charles, you know, when you're in weather like that, man, you know, and you've been in Louisiana as long as we have, it's just miserable. I mean, you have to put on a coat, long johns, and pants just to go across the street for breakfast if you're – you know, staying in a hotel or whatever, you know, if you're staying at a, you know, a brand hotel. It's just cold. You can't even go to the car without <laughs> getting dressed, fully dressed. Yeah. You get spoiled in the South. Ooh. I don't think I'm ready for it. <laughs> 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 oh, it's, you know, the cold is like yogurt. It's an acquired taste. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a pitch in the dirt. It was like the heat. I had to get used to the heat. I hated it. That's right, it. yeah. I hated it. You got to get used to it. You know, and people think this this heat in Louisiana is uh, really hot until you go to maybe a Phoenix oh. where it's dry heat and it's really miserable. <laughs> so you either in the steamer in Louisiana yeah. or the oven in Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That pitch in there for Or a Vegas. Strike. Or Vegas. Oh. Vegas in, like, July and August is yeah. just disrespectfully hot. Yeah. It's amazing this pitcher uh, for Alabama State have done a, a really good job by by keeping, you know, he was struggling when he walked two runners, yeah. two base runners, and he got out of it. He was able to weather the storm because – Coach had bullpen warming up. And that's a strikeout there for Alabama State. Zeros across the board for Florida AM. 
We go now to the bottom of the fourth inning with the score two to nothing. Alabama State on top, back after this. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Trenton Jamison now up to bat here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Russ Chandler Stadium at McNeese Baseball Park on the campus of Georgia Tech. This one's straight up in the air, and it looks like coming down with it could be Greco, and that's exactly what happens in foul territory. You don't like to see catches in foul territory like that. <laughs> well, if but, you're playing defense, you like it. Yeah. You know, the hitter on the first pitch. Uh, you know, something that he did is he really had to look that ball in all the way because of the sun. Really, he, yeah. he found where it was and kept his eye on it. And we can't really see because of the overhang, but you know, it's, it's obviously on that side of the field. It's the right side of the field. Yeah, the one the, the sun is really smiling on that side of the field. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the shot. This goes to the from Hater Moda over to I Greco. Mean, the defense. I really have been pleased with the defensive plays that have taken place this week. You know. This is what college baseball should be like. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to see kids f missing the ball, throwing balls all over the place. It's been a couple of them. When that happened in the big leagues, when people are forced to try and rush stuff, you got me? Like, for instance, in game one, when the kid tried to throw the ball of sudden, the second baseman, when the guy dropped the ball in right field, yeah. second baseman tried to throw the ball to the shortstop, threw it away. That's, that happens every now and then. I guess for the Oakland A's, this is happening a lot. <laughs> <laughs> One of the worst yeah. records in Major League Baseball start of the well, hit start. Well, because they don't have a lot. They traded all the way their players. Well, everybody goes down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. We now go to the top half of the fifth inning. It is two to nothing, Florida A&M trailing. Back after this.
And back here at Russ Chandler Stadium, there you see fans who are enjoying the ball game. Coach Riggins is up there. Coach Riggins. And next to him, uh, he's been with in operations for over 40 years at Alabama State. Sitting really? Just to the right of him, yeah. Just retired a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. As a matter of fact, he helped break the ground on the Joel Reed Acadome. Okay. So they're back. So how long you've been associated in this way? Oh, Lord, 1993. Really? Mm -hmm. And you started with Grambling? Started with Grambling. Went there right. as a student. Okay. Been here a few Sundays and a couple Tuesdays. That's good. <laughs> we needed to make sure we get on Centauri people know that. I asked Charles how long he'd been. He said a long time, so he wouldn't give me the year. Yeah, he uh, well, Charles <laughs> Charles been in, been in the swag longer than I have. Yeah, he wouldn't give me the year. Ooh, I think Charles might be knocking on 35, 40 uh, years, somewhere be. around there. Yeah, Which is not no big deal. That's good. Longevity has its place. Mm -hmm. You know, I was at Southern 40 years. Yeah. So I survived it. When Charles went to uh, college, he used to step off the bus when he was doing a radio broadcast. And at that point in time, Aaron James was the men's basketball right. coach at Grambling. So Charles stepped off, and they were getting ready to play Mississippi Valley, and Lafayette Stribling went over and said, hey, 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 Aaron, where you get that boy from? Oh, he the radio man. Yeah. <laughs> His seven-footer coming off the bus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, single up the middle. Yeah. Not bad. Fam, you ain't going to go. I mean, yeah, fam, you won't go away. It won't go away quietly. That is the bottom of that lineup. So let's see what happens. Not the heart of that lineup, the meat of it. <laughs> well, the bottom of the lineup struggled a little bit last uh, the game against Alabama State. He had a couple of hits. Will Brown had a triple and a single in the bottom half of the lineup, but they really struggled. Otherwise, the top half of the lineup really, what well, should say, towards the middle, Jared Weber, mm -hmm. Stardo, Greco, and Perini really did a great job in that lineup yesterday against Alabama State. You know, you it, it, it's, it's concerning now, and I see why coaches got someone warming up, that the kid is trying to bunt. You got to let him bunt. He might pop it up, you know? There it is. And that's a good bunt down the first Could base line. Trouble. They pulled him off yeah. the back. I knew it could be trouble. And that's the spark that you need. King got pulled off the back yeah. off of the throw from he, Colin. He didn't go at it right, so. Look at that. They're right there. Oh, man, that's, that was close. But he pulled him off the back just enough. And there you see. Coach from Florida and then was right there as well, the first base coach. Yeah, you got to help the umpire. And I believe that they will have the. He didn't look down there for no for just looking. Yep. He's probably going there. Coach Vasquez going to the mound. He's got his. He's asking for the ball. The pitcher doesn't want to give it up. I love it. I love it. That's my kind of pitcher. I've had this happen to me, Coach. Don't worry. They don't want to give it up. Nope. But that says the competitiveness. And so we'll have a pitching change. We'll take this time out for a pitching change for Alabama State back after this.
Back here at Russ Chandler Stadium here yeah. in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's go down to Charles Bishop, who is with head coach of Alabama State. Yeah, down here with Coach Vasquez. Coach, uh, uh, your starter gave you a few good innings here. You decided to go to the bullpen. What was the decision? No, we just, you know, I think uh, it's a strike uh, game right now. We got to be able to continue to throw strikes, and I feel that we're able to do that. At least we'll be put in a position to make some plays, and he gave, gave us what he could to die, and now we're just moving on to the next guy and see if we can continue to, to compete on the mound. Uh, so far, uh, you guys have made a couple of great defensive plays to get out of innings. Coach, what have you seen thus far from your team? Uh, we're just competing, man. We're just competing. We know we're way too familiar with these guys. They obviously do an excellent job, and we know that we're in a battle. Whether they, it's been a long day for them or not, they're still going to show up over here and compete. So we gotta, we got to be ready to go every pitch, and, and I think that's what we're going to have to do in order to win this game. Sure thing. Thank you, Coach. Here is a bunt down the third baseline. It's going to be tough going. And the boy fumbled the ball a little bit with the ball, and Hayter Moda gets aboard, and bases are loaded. Classic case. The pitcher didn't know what was going on. You know, he, he had to know the guy's button. You're going to have one play if it's bunted this way. Only play he had was the first. Well. But he was sticking third when he, once that ball get at the certain line, you only got one play. Gonna call that a hit. That's what it was. Yep. Now Jalen Niles at the plate. That's in there for a strike. Now your key is if he could get a strike out right here, then he can play for a double play. One pitch, double play ball. That's it. Swung on. Good shot right to home. No other play there, but a great defensive play by Alabama State coming home instead of going to first. It's a play by the shortstop. Well, that's the third baseman, rather. Smart play by the catcher not to throw. Everybody else moves over. Action Jackson. Yep, Todd Jackson at the plate now. Base is still loaded. Pitch. Tell some of the fans did not like that call. <laughs> I mean, look, you get a strike call and you don't like, you're not going to like it at the time. Right. It's just the way it goes. That pitch just missing for a ball. Here is LeBoy. And this is where you're starting to see Florida a &M gaining some momentum. You can tell it. Mm -hmm. And the crowd, man, a lot of folks coming over from Tallahassee and folks who live in this Atlanta area coming out to the ball game. Yes, they are. And LeBoy behind in the count now, three and one. Pitch off the plate. Ooh, it never just got back to yeah. the inside there. Stayed out. Lucky didn't get that 22nd. And he hit him, and that means that Florida AM will score a run. Guys got to understand it's so much better to make a young man swing the bat than to. You know, he was trying to do something with the curveball. Let him hit the turn. Throw a fastball. And now, Ty Jackson hit by a pitch. He's taking a long time. He's close to that 22nd. 
And for those who don't know, there is a pitch clock that's in yeah. place. And he's taking a long time to get him to get it to him. Okay, he's moving fast enough. Pitch to the inside half of the plate. And it's now one and one to count. Popped in the air, and this one will go out of play. Ooh. Tough young man. Well, this one went out of play, and uh, you look at the third baseman, Christian Lopez, he tumbled over that fence. Trying to make the play. Oh, what a play by that youngster up there. Looked like he one-handed it. Swung on and miss. Strike. Three and two outs. Jared Weber coming to the plate in. Now, if you're Florida A&M, you do not want to leave men on base. You've had a little bit of problem with that throughout the course of the year. You don't want to leave men on base against Alabama State. They left them against game one, didn't they, against Prairie View? Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to leave some aboard again. Left three on. You know, teams are creatures of habit. That they do what they usually do, you know? No runs on three hits, no errors. And two left aboard. Two left. We'll take this timeout. Two to one is our score. Alabama State on top back after this. Oh, you can see it's laid out here, the tailgating going on with Alabama State fans and family and friends who are joining them. Look at beans, potato salad. You got sausages. And see, they did it right. They got the potato salad on yeah. ice. <laughs> Let's go down to Charles Bishop. He's got Coach Shoup down in the dugout. Coach, you had a little mini rally there last inning. He was able to scratch out one run. Yeah, we, I'd like to see us do a little bit more. He had base load, no outs, only were able to get one. So it's a good job of pitching on their part. Uh, still got a little bit of that hangover effect from last night, I believe. So we just need somebody to get a big hit and pick us up. I think we'll get our bats going once somebody comes through that big hit. Yeah, I was going to ask about that uh, just in terms of playing. Uh, this is your third game in 24 hours. Uh, how, have, how have you guys responded? Well, we got to wait the bats up. So, we're, you know, we're an offensive club. We've been that all year. Ray's doing a great job pitches, keeping us in the ball game. So, as I said, somebody needs to come through that big hit. We'll be right where we want to be, hopefully. Sure thing. Thank you, Coach. You know, Coach, you talked about waking the bats up. I remember when Barrett Ray was the head coach at Gramley. He went into the dugout during one and a half innings, and he took all the bats and threw them out on the field. He got kicked out of the game, but Gramley won. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. I didn't teach him that. No, he did that on his own, I think, Coach. Okay. <laughs> And this one's straight up in the air once again. And coming over to get it is the second baseman, Will Brown, and he makes the catch. Two outs. Uh, 
Got some fiery coaches in this conference. Yeah. Probably in basketball, one of the most fiery coaches I'd probably say on the men's side is Landon Bussey from Alcorn. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Charles would know what I'm talking about. Oh, man, he's yeah. almost on. The, he, he's like a third of the way on the floor. <laughs> he's <Yeah>. so intense. <laughs> yeah. There's a shot. And again, right to Will Brown. Throws it over. One, two, three in that inning. No runs, no airs, no hits, nobody left on base. Second inning in a row that uh, Florida a ms defense has retired Alabama State. One, two, three. We'll take this timeout. We'll be right back. Jan Michael Bastardo up to bat now for Florida A&M as we start the top of the sixth inning. Swung on and missed. Florida A&M, and you know, you heard Coach Shoot talk about, you know, he's got to wake the bats up a little bit more. And, we got three hits in this ball game, two to one. This is a really close ball game. Yeah, yeah. Right back at the pitcher's mound. Should have a chance. The boy goes over to first. Got stretched it. Stretched out. Got him at first. What a play by the pitcher, the boy, and an even more impressive play by King. And King had to stretch. Oh yeah, he got him. Whew. Yeah. I'd tear everything up if I did that. No, oh, come on. <laughs> I'd end up on YouTube. Uh -huh. And in the Ooh. And here's a shot. This time it goes to shortstop McIntosh. He goes over to King, and there's two outs. Well, both defenses have played. Very well in the last couple of innings. Oh, yeah. Well, they play well all game. Yep. There's no errors. They made the plays. <clears throat> Alabama State trying to close this out and go one, two, three in this inning. Well, the Florida State, Florida and m went one, two, three in the top, bottom yep. of the fifth. So they're trying to return the favor. Yep. Florida a m was retired one, two, three in the first third, fourth, and now it's strike two with two outs here in the sixth. Now this pitcher here is a lot more savvy mm -hmm. than what I've seen coming out of that bullpen for them. Oh, there it is. They got him. Yeah. Strike three. One, two, three. Once again for Alabama State. No runs, no hits, no airs, nobody left on base. We now go to the bottom of the six, two to one. Hornets on top, back after this.
We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal's going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. 5G boss mode activate. Smile, you're on Cricket. Back here at Rush Chandler Stadium, Ali LaPred will come up to the plate. And Coach, you just noticed that uh, Alabama State, they had church meeting over there. Yeah. I'm surprised that Charles wasn't in there with him. He's the man on the ground. Yeah, I was getting over there, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> this one going up in the air, and this will come down to the right fielder, Chad Michael Bastardo. Who was preaching the sermon? Deacon LaPree. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it always helps when the players meet on their, their own, you know, because now they understand the severity of what they need to get done. Corey King now coming to the plate. He was hit by a pitch back in the second inning. That was close. Yeah, you start having those kind of prayer meetings over there, you know. Especially with the players, you know it's intense. Boy, oh, it's intense. That's got to be a strike. Yeah. There's a shot. Oh. Nice job. No, could make it. And Niles threw the ball away. That was a great play. It's a hit. That's a good runner. It was going yep. to be a bang, bang. Ball bounced up in the air and back to towards the bullpen yep. area. The thing is, the run game is almost nullified because of fam you catching catcher's ability to throw. Just to the outside. Championship game Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 Central. That's a double play ball. It's Six, a double four, play. No. Actually threw the ball away. So I'll see, will they give that a hit? No, that's a force play. It's a force at second. They were going for the double play. So now. It was a four. Four, six. Or six, four. Six, four, yeah. Six, four on the out at second and a force right. at first. No force at first. Save. Ooh. Missed it. Jameson Sr. from Atlanta, Georgia, playing in front of his hometown and family members, as a matter of fact. That's this a one is in the left center that gap. Let's go run. Here comes. He hit it in the sweet spot. Christian, here comes Lopez. Coming around, Christian Lopez will score a run. It's 3-1 to one, Alabama State. 
And Trenton Jamison, stand-up double. He's got two hits now on the day. You just mentioned, playing in front of who? Hometown. There you go. His folks are here. You called it. Coach, a little subtle adjustment that that hitter made. He kind of came up in the box just a little bit so he can get that off-speed uh, pitch that was coming. That's good. I'm glad you noticed that. This is what we're trying to do, educate our listeners to let them know why kids are enjoying success and why they're not. So the kids feel good about themselves. They had that meeting and they scored a run. I'm telling you, no, prayer meeting works. It never fails. <laughs> prayer is the most powerful tool we have. And it's not the dollar, it's prayer. Yes, indeed. And now it's three to one. To the outside for a ball. And if you're Alabama State putting another run up on the board, you feel good because you're able to take advantage of some timely hitting. Yes. There's a strike. Florida and M still kind of a little bit of a carry over to how they played this morning against uh, Prairie View A&M. Right, right. Two teams, another two teams that don't see each other very much. You're right about that. Here's a pitch. This one. Oh, you got to watch it. We save. You he got him it. out. If you run through. So Jamal George out at first, but not before a run. One run, two hits, no airs. One man left on base. We now go to top of the seventh inning. Three to one. Alabama State, back after this. We are a limitless future. Opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Hydration dropping. Rapid rehydration initiated. Unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes. Rapid rehydration to get you back on your game. Gator Light. Now available in powder and Gator Light Zero Sugar. Back here at Russ Chandler Stadium, Magnese Baseball Park here in Atlanta, Georgia. A little love and happiness played for the crowd here. Oh. We love the Southern Soul. Oh, you're saying it. Yes, you indeed. You see, Charles would never have no part of this. <laughs> he, didn't want, he doesn't want no part of it. Saying, Tony, oh, I knew on, you coach. would love it. Coach, I come on, man. It. Oh, oh geez. I tried to get him. He won't ever talk to me about it. <laughs> he won't respond. He ignores me. Oh. He won't give me any love. Well, there, no, there's a lot of love and happiness. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so, Charles, if you're listening, just remember, a little love goes a long ways. <laughs> love and happiness. Oh, man. <laughs> well, a little bit more happiness uh, on the Alabama State side in the dugout after they scored a run in the bottom of the six. And now Florida A&M trying to show a little love to their fans by getting a, a run or so here in this half of the inning. This one a chopper, and this one's going to go to Christian Lopez, and he will Ooh. throw it over to Corey King, and he gets the out. They're hustling, though. They're running down the line. Something may happen. 
Now they're about eight outs away. Hands all You're counting outs now. Yep. The outs begin to be counted. Hader Moda now coming to the plate. He's got a uh, hit in the ball game. He also hit into a double play back in the second inning. And now it's two balls and no strikes, one out. Three balls, you can't walk people because you bring in the bring the tie, tie and run to the plate. So got to make him swing the bat. And that one's a strike. So now three and one to count. You know, in your Atlanta, there's a lot of different places to go, lots of food spots. If you leave Atlanta hungry, it's your fault. Yeah, it is. But what the time we get out of here, we can't go. Whew. I mean, you can go somewhere that's simple, probably. Yeah, right. But nowhere where you know get. But I've been to a lot of nice eater eatery here in Atlanta. Oh man, there was a shot into the almost hit the vendor out in <laughs> right field. <laughs> That's a pretzel he, ball. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, that one hit the hit the vendor. I mean, it could have bounced up right there, man. I think she's awake out there. Now. Oh, yeah, she's definitely awake. She's got fresh chips out there. And now a walk here for Florida A&M. Well, she was looking at her phone as she was asleep. She is wide awake now. Jalen Niles now to the plate. There's a pitch in there for a strike. That's one thing when you are out in the open, <laughs> they always tell you, pay attention to where the ball is. That's hit. right. That pitch a little bit low. My family, we were at the old county stadium in Milwaukee, and they were playing the White Sox and went with my dad and uh, my stepmom and a few other folks. And foul ball comes screaming down the first base line. It bounced off of one guy's head, bounced off my stepmother's shoulder, and went into the next row. Really? Yeah. And this is caught in center field, second out of the inning. Yeah, ball off the head and the shoulder. Doesn't feel too no, good. No, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> We're not yeah. used to that. You know, when you're a little older, you know, something pops off you like that, you know. Yeah. Ty Jackson now coming to the plate. Action Jackson. Yep. Need some action with that bat so he can get it out, to, out in the field of play. Ooh. Man. Some of the folks don't like it. And then nobody asks for help. Let's see. Ooh. No, he didn't go. Here's a pitch. This one sailed in there for a strike. One and one to count. Ty Jackson trying to get his first hit of the ball game. And he throw it over to first to keep the runner honest. I don't think that run is going anywhere. Mm -mm. And this one off the foul line. Well, Coach, you get done with the tournament. What's next up for you? Uh... Well, I, after the tournament, I do a couple of speaking engagements. Then I do the uh, HBCU swing swingman classic in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Then I do the Hendry Aaron Invitational 
and later in July. And uh, and then I do, uh, in September, international, I do the uh, uh, Major League Baseball Alumni Players Association. Uh, fun, uh, we do something with uh, a clinic in, in Panama City, Panama. So you're gonna get a chance to go to Central America. Oh, I go. I've gone many times. I love to go down there. I'm a I'm a big history buff and like to see landmarks. I love to oh, go down there and see the Panama Canal. Oh, what a yeah, that's a hell of a structure. But they have other structures in in Colombia and Ecuador and Peru and Chile. Oh my goodness, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Here's a pitch. Strike three. Ty Jackson goes down for the first time today swinging. No runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on base. We go now to the bottom of the seventh. Three to one, our score. Back here in Atlanta, Georgia. Florida A&M right now trailing three to one, bottom of the seventh inning. Nice little breeze now coming in. It is. It's kind of nice. wake you up. Yeah. You know, I've had a blast being able to work with you and Charles Edmund, and now we added the bishop, Charles the bishop. I know, Charles the bishop of the swag, absolutely. Yeah, it's been really, it's, it's been rewarding, refreshing, you know, and, uh, even Charles laugh every now and then. Really? Edmund. I can't yeah. believe it. Well, I force him, I pinch him. <laughs> <laughs> if he's la listening, he must be having a ball. If he's listening to us, huh? You're wearing oh. him down, Coach. You're wearing <laughs> him down. <laughs> wearing him down. <laughs> I got to wear him down. Uh. Ray Flores at the plate. Here's a shot down the first baseline. What a play. By the first baseman, Sebastian Greco, the junior, came screaming down the line. That one had double all on it. Man, that was just really a great play, able to get down the line, get his glove down, and feel the ball cleanly. Did you see the athletic ability of the umpire Booker? What an athlete. <laughs> Not many athletes could have done that. Oh, you got If we could get another shot of it. We gotta, That's an athletic move by the umpire. See, a lot of people ain't looking, but watch this. Look at him. It didn't tell the whole story. This shot will tell it to us. Look at that. He's, <laughs> look at him. That's an athlete right there. <laughs> it was like he was dancing on stage somewhere. Probably was listening to love and happiness in his mind. There you go. Nice stab. Long throw out at first. Now we what see. What a play by Hater Mota. 
throwing it over to Sebastian Greco for the second out. This is what it's all about. Really great plays. Yes. He had to go up and get that, and it was a fair ball. And look how cool the umpire was. Didn't panic. Man, that was a great throw. A couple of nice web gems this inning, guys. Yeah. What we called the what the umpire was able to do, Booker. If not, we can't give it a web gem. Just an athletic move. I don't know. You know, you know, you get an, an umpire that jumps up like that. It, it can be a web gem, depending yeah. on how it is. Absolutely. That pitch to the low and outside. You know how many umpire could have broken it with brick and ankle? Yeah. Man, I was impressed by that. <laughs> uh, you got to be in shape to be an umpire. Yeah. Here's a shot. Nice job once again this time. Niles getting it over to Greco, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We now go to the top half of the eighth inning with the score three to one. Alabama State on top. Ty Hanchi coming up to bat for Florida A&M. This is game number three of day three of the SWAC baseball tournament. First of three years here in Atlanta, Georgia. And what a SWAC baseball tournament. It's been around different cities. Um, let's see, Fort Worth that was there for a little while. At the, uh, New Orleans, of course, been there for a few years. Here's a shot in the left field. That's a base hit. Talk about waking the bats up. That's exactly what Hanshi did to start things off here in the eighth. Now the key now. Does you, do, do you try and bunt or you swing away? It's tough to give up, give an out here, but you have to play maybe for one run at a time. So we'll see if he's going to bunt or swing away. I think you absolutely swing this bat. Oh! Base hit in the left center. Now two men aboard from Florida A&M. Well, well, now, Coach, do you bunt and move runners over now that you have runners on first and second? You probably want to consider it. Let me put it that way. Uh, they're going to find out. The, they call a timeout here. Yeah, well, what Coach is doing is giving, okay, well, nobody's throwing over there yet in the pen, so. This is a this is a good move here by the coach because I think now you bring the guys over who are on the bases and you got one or two options here. If you do bunt the ball, you kind of make the pitcher think a little bit, especially if you can get the ball down the first base line. He may think and go over to third maybe, and then if he hesitates long enough and you got a good guy on, on, at the plate, he may be late throwing it to first and you got bases loaded. If he bunted down the first and he tried to throw the third, Coach Vasquez will run him out of this park. Okay, <laughs> all right. So let's put it. Let's make sure we got that understood. But remember, we talked about how sometimes you're asking pitchers to do what they normally don't do. Yeah, but that's that one. That's one we know he ain't gonna do. His teammates won't let him do it. Uh, maybe he's out there to read. Oh, we got oh, a new pitcher, and it's a 
the pitcher is an infielder. The third baseman. Yeah, he's taking all his tape off. first base, whatever. He's a first base. That's a shortstop. Shortstop, okay. All right, so. So now you're putting an athlete on the mound, so now. A lot, a lot of things change, okay? You just put an athlete out there. Kyler McIntosh, now the pitcher. In my coaching career, I only had that to do that on a couple, couple of occasions. Well, so now we'll take a break here because of the pitching change. So we'll take a timeout. Looks like Kyler McIntosh will get the ball here. And now who will take his spot at short? Is that going to be? 24. It's going to be Lopez. So Lopez had to come over from third then. So that means somebody's got to take his spot. Number one. That's going to be Flores. He'll go from second to third. The first ball thrown to Flores went through his legs. That's not good. So we got all kinds of movement. We'll talk about that here in just a second, back after this. And you got a new second base with well, That's going to be nine, I believe. If, if, uh... HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. Now what uh, the batter has a home run uh, in, the, in this tournament, John Michael. All right. Thanks a lot, brother. And uh, look, we got a lot of movement going on here for Alabama State as McIntosh now is the pitcher for the Hornets. And so now he moves to pitcher. Lopez moves over to short. Okay. Flores, I believe, That's goes third. from second to third. Yes. And then Jaden Sloan moves into second. So lots of movement there. And what I was thinking, if they were bunning, Vasquez get another athlete on the mound that could cover a lot of territory. Mm -hmm. So that was a good move. I don't know what he does as a closer. Swung on, missed. And we're here in the top of the eighth inning. And so again, Coaches are trying to get to sat to Sunday now. That's the biggest thing if you're Coach Vasquez. If you're Florida AM, you're just trying to get to Saturday. You're trying to get to tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because they would play Saturday. Yep. Yeah. They, they win, they go to Saturday, they lose, they go back to Tallahassee. Right. I think they'd rather go to Saturday. And about you. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> well, you know, look. I'm here all week. <laughs> yeah. Charles, I get to work another day with Charles? If uh, one of these two teams wins, yes. And here's a shot to left field. Runners will move around, and now the bases and are you jammed. you get a guy hurt. He's hurt. Yep, and that is going to be. Is that Flor no, Flores? Is that him? Lopez. That's Lopez. Well, he's slow to get up. Hurt his wrist. He didn't look, he doesn't have the shortstop body, which was a concern when I saw him put out there, you know. Well, kind of talk about what the, the build of a shortstop because it's all different. Ooh, did well, you see that? Yeah. Go, play that again there, James. It, that is it, it rolled, tough. Roll his wrist. He's going after this ball here, and you can just see his wrist. Ooh. That's. Trust me, he's okay.
this is one of the problems you have when you start making wholesale changes to key position, particularly on the infield, you know, and in these kind of situations. And I think if Lopez may stay in. He's probably going to third base or something. <laughs> Maybe he'll run some dirt on it. Maybe he's going to get it taped. Yeah, a little dirt, huh? Yep. I never lo love making wholesale changes on my infield. Too many decisions, especially late in the game, in a high-pressure game. Maybe for one or two outs. Yeah. But we're talking about six outs. You got to make six outs. And you take your key defensive guy out to pitch. So let's see how it comes back. Well, I'll tell you what, Lopez is a trooper. And bases loaded for Florida A&M. Florida A&M is, they want to win. Get to Saturday. Well, I would have found my closer down there. I know he can't be your closer. Your shortstop, huh? I don't believe so. And this one gets away from the catcher. Here comes the runner, and he is safe. Everybody moves over. This is what happens. The wheels come off when you start making moves. Wow. Well, another run on the board for Florida A&M, and now they've got they've cut that lead down to three to two now. Nobody's out. No. And here's a shot in the center field. This one's got a chance. It's, it's up, up, and away. Greco with a home run. And Florida A&M has just busted this game wide open. We Sebastian think. Greco puts three up on the board. It's five to three. It found the jet stream. <laughs> it found it. Almost like found my thrill on Blueberry Hill. And now the Florida A&M fans, they're awake. The dugout of the Rattlers, they're up and excited. And if the bats were asleep, I think they have just come alive. They've just come alive. Take a look at that shot again in just a second. Next up now is Perini. And this one just straight into center field. And all the center fielder could do was look at it, hit the green wall. Which means if he hits the green wall, it is out of here. Four runs in this inning, five to three. This one fouled off. Now we want to go back and have a little review here. Yes. Alabama State scored five runs yesterday. in the ninth inning yesterday against Jackson State. No, Florida's against Florida A and M rather. Swung on and miss. Strike three. And that's just one out. He had five runs in the ninth inning against Florida A&M and turn things around there. And all of a sudden, they win the ball game. They're in good shape today. Yep. Five to three. Five runs, seven hits, no errors for FAMU. Three runs, five hits, no errors for Alabama State. You got to always be careful when you start changing the midfielders to pitch. And that's why I specifically said I only did it once. Yeah. Where, you know, uh, once in tournament play. Here's the pitch. That went in there for a strike. 
unless the pitcher is overpowering yeah. or got something really. And he, I haven't seen that from this young man. This one fouled off, strike two. So if I'm going to bring a position player in, he's going to be overpowered. Well, that last hit was overpowering. <laughs> he had a really good swing on it, too. Here's a shot in the left field. That's going to go for extra bases. Coming around second, Will Brown. And Will, what can Brown do for you? Has come into second base with a double. Not bad. But maybe we, we he doesn't have what he think he we thought he had in the bullpen, you know. Well, I'll tell you what, fantastic play so far here in this inning. And you can only have so many miracle miracle victories. Yeah. Against a team in particular uh, on back to back days. Up the middle. Yeah. Up the middle. Here That's comes Will Brown. He's in there for a base hit. And Hayner Mota is going to be popped that second. That's what happens. You move your shortstop out. Then Lopez can't get there. Or Flores, whatever. I think it's Lopez. See, you see, what I, when I saw all of those changes, that's the first thing I said. It's creating too many holes in the defense. You got yeah. me? There was a lot of changes. So he was thrown out at second after the hit. And here's another one up the middle. Base hit. Jalen Niles now into the swing of things. And now with Ty Jackson coming up, that is the ninth batter of this inning for Florida A&M. Centurion never bring in a kid to close if he's not, don't have closer stuff. You gotta make guys uncomfortable. They got comfortable when he got in. There's a shot in the left center field. This one is gonna roll for a little bit. Coming around to third base will be Jalen Niles, runners at the corner. <laughs> I'm laughing, man. <laughs> Guys, Alabama State has freshman Luis Rodriguez up in the bullpen throwing. Yep. If you ever want to wake up bad, you just did. <laughs> he woke him up. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, Charles, for Alabama State, this inning here looks very familiar to innings that they've given other teams. And here's a shot down the right field line. <laughs> Here comes Jalen Niles. He's coming home. Ty Jackson, he's coming home. The throw to the plate, not in time. A double by Ty Hanchi. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, huh? I'm the man. What you mean? All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, we found out that Florida A&M's bats have awakened and that coach has now broadcast fans who say he's the man. Whoa, is that true? Uh, it is. <laughs> and now we've got another pitcher coming up. I just tried to deliver what they want, Charles. And I now, mean, Edmund, Charles Edmund I'm talking to. Coming to the plate now, or I should say coming on the mound, is Luis Watt Rodriguez. We'll talk about that in just a second. We'll take this time out. We'll be right back.
Luis Rodriguez on the mound now for Alabama State. Here's a pitch. That one in there for a strike at the plate. Jared Weber and for Florida a and they have batted around now. Uh, this is Weber's second time to the plate. And now they've scored seven runs in this inning. That went inside. Well, we've seen it happen against uh, Southern, I guess, uh, where Cookman scored a bunch of runs late. And they had the same, sort of the same situation. He couldn't go, he brought in the pitcher, couldn't get him out, and he couldn't go get nobody else to get him out. Yeah. Cut like 10 runs over the last three innings. Right, right. And and they were all saying they had the X number of pitchers ready to go, but he brought in the shortstop. So we'll see what happens. He's the coach, and he's been very successful. So we'll see what happens. Well, Florida A&M is putting on a clinic here in the eighth inning. This would have been the guy I would have brought in. Here's a shot in the right field. This one could be caught, and it will be caught. I mean, this the time. And that is going to be uh, taken in by Ali LaPred to end the inning. Well, seven runs. Was it nine hits? Yeah, nine hits, no airs, and one man left. So we go now to the ninth inning, or to the uh, bottom of the eighth inning. Eight to three is our score. Fam, you on top. Back after this. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. dropping <laughs> rapid rehydration initiated unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes rapid rehydration to get you back on your game gator light now available in powder and gator light zero sugar Back here at Ben Rush Chandler Stadium. New left fielder. That's a strike. Ben Kim now in left field for Florida A&M, taking Jared Weber's spot. Guys, I talked with Coach Shoup. There's a base hit for Alabama State. And there's Jack Hay. Making hay. <laughs> I Go talk, ahead. Talk with Coach Shoup in between innings, and he said that yesterday was very hard. We have got to close this game out. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. Tell him we know. <laughs> he may have to walk home if he doesn't. <laughs> but you know what? I tell you what, Charles, that was an impressive inning. Probably one of the best innings that Florida A&M has had against Alabama State all year long. No doubt about it. He said the same approach to the plate. Be patient. They found some stuff that they liked. And they jumped on it. Seven runs in that inning. Yep. But I tell you what, that is that is the way that you uh, wake the bats up. Swung on and missed for a strike. Now 0-2 the count with nobody out. Wagner still on the mound now for Florida A&M. And the ball gets away, and Hay is going to move to second.
This has been a big, big game, big inning here for Florida A&M. They're trying to close it out here. It's going to be a foul. That's why you got to you get to live another day. Yep. And the odds are the pitcher can make a mistake here. I've seen it happen so many times. Yeah, you don't want to get up there and give it all back. Right. He should probably get closer to the plate. They're pitching him away. Swung on him is for strike three. Lapreed really wasn't trying to think team. You got to think team. You got to find a way to get on base. You need base runners. Well, the uh, Grand Slam uh, rule is out. Is out. The five. Yeah, but you still need to get runners on. That's right. You score, and then you can get it back into play. The, the mountain is going to be a little harder to climb today. Oh, there's no question. It's hard to duplicate things. Here's a throw. In there for a strike. Well, you know, if you have to play fam, as hot as they are right now, and if they can continue to be this hot, they're going to be a tough out to get. Yeah. Now he's going to try to live out there because he doesn't have velocity anymore. So everything, and this is what everybody got to know over there. Get on top of the play because he's throwing away. He, he doesn't, and try to make him throw you inside. The velocity is gone. You see what I'm saying? Yep, a little bit high on that one. You got to use strategy here. 3-1. Take the base on ball. Pitcher taking his time here. There is an avenue to, for victory, but it's got to be. Whoa. That's, his eyes, that's one of the ways the avenue exists with walks. Well, now he's got a man on first and second. And um, the coach is really playing with fire. You got two more innings. This ain't just one. Yep. You actually got two more innings. So he's playing with fire. Eight to three, our score. Eight runs, 12 hits, no airs for Florida AM. Three oh. runs, six hits, no airs for Alabama State. That pitch is outside if for this, ball. If this kid, this is the one that hurt his wrist. You got to throw him hard inside now because he jammed his wrist. Those are the things you got to be now able to think about. Christian Lopez at yeah. the plate. Pitch to the outside for a ball. Coach doesn't have any velocity left to jam him inside. That, well, still, yeah. I think he's seen enough. I think, I know he doesn't have it, but the guy's hurt. So he's not going to be able to get the bat head out probably either. What, what do you want to know if he's got another visit? He might not be going to get him. Huh? Yeah. Well, probably had the pitcher's my own visit. Eight three is our score. When they break up the meeting on the mound. Oh, he's playing with fire. But you know what? He's playing with house money. He's got five runs. House money. Again, Charles didn't like playing with house money. Oh yeah. He said it's still money. <laughs> still money. <laughs> you can't take it home with you. It's the house money. Coach Vasquez talking to one of the umpires now. They're probably charging him for a meeting on timeout because he was meeting with his coaches. He was meeting with his coaches. So that could cost. Yeah. Yeah. 2 and 0 the count, and now officials will get together here. This is where you really got to know the rules of the game. Yeah, here. right, right. You see, he met with his coaches, so they're probably charging him with something. 
you know what? If it would cost me a, a out or a bat, I wouldn't worry about it. We still got to hit the ball. Well, still a meeting out there with Coach Vasquez and a couple of the umpires. And Coach Vasquez walking away disappointed. This is why you got these rules, man. Well, Christian Lopez up to bat. Here's a shot to the shortstop. 6-4-3. Coach played with fire and didn't get burned. So we got one hit. One run, oh, no runs. One hit. Two hits, no errors. One hit, no errors. And so now we go to the top of the ninth. Eight to three is our score. Florida a and on top. Back here at McNeese Baseball Park here in Atlanta, Georgia. Ben Kim, who took the spot of Jared Weber in the top half, in the bottom half of the inning, will now come up to bat. And Luis Rodriguez still on the mound for Alabama State. Well, Coach, I tell you what. Talk about trying to turn things around for your team. And here's a shot by Kim. It'll go straight up in the air. Center fielder will catch up with it. Yeah, things really went south for Alabama State. Uh, you got to be careful. You just got to be careful. And Sebastian... I caution Greco. young coaches all the time. Don't be too smart. This mm. is dangerous trying to be too smart. Greco straight up in the air and it goes out of play. So there's one out in the inning. The game is tough enough as it is. <laughs> Sebastian Greco. He walked, and then he had that big home run. I'll tell you what, talk, this is just one of those turnaround games if you're Florida a &M and you're saying, hey, we just want to get to tomorrow. That's all we want to do is get to tomorrow. We don't care how we do it, just get to tomorrow. They've been playing with house money. And here's a shot by... They've been playing with house Sebastian money. Sebastian Greco goes up in the air, and it is caught by the right fielder. Two outs. 
they've been playing with house money, so it's, it's you know, it's understandable. That's why the camera kept the picture in there. Vasquez couldn't afford to. He had the lead. He felt he had to go do something. You got me? Pierini now coming up to the plate. Absolutely. I mean, just, just think about it. A guy was struggling and losing, but the coach kept him in. The guy was ahead, and he'd get taken out. Here's a shot in the right field for Perini. One, two, three, inning. So it's, now let's see if there's magic left or lightning left in the bottle. Or it all went out yesterday. We'll find out in just a second. Do the Hornets still have a sting left? We'll find out in just a second. Bottom of the ninth, eight to three, our score. Back after this. That was a pretty good one. Thank you. you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal is going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. 5G boss mode activate. Smile, you're on Cricket. There's Midtown, and you can see construction going on with one of the high rises. Of course, you can see that out beyond left and left center field. And now for Alabama State. They've got to get five to tie and six to win. They won five out of six against AM this year in the regular season. And there's a swing. Against fam, you mean? Huh? Yeah, against fam, rather. Then they lost the, well, they won that game in the tournament, the first game against fam here in the tournament. And this one goes towards the backstop. Here's a pitch outside for a ball. Three and one now to count. That one in the dirt and a walk. Oh my. New batter. And for Alabama State, it's going to be Kerrigan Edmondson. That's a close pitch. He's just got his palm on the ball. Doesn't have a lot more than that. And we have to remember, he, this would be a complete game for him. Ooh, pitch just missing. I think he got, got him through that eight in, and he might have probably should have said, I've, got, I've seen enough. Yep, he's back to the outside now. There is action going up in the Florida a and bullpen. <laughs> I know he, don't, he doesn't want to go there, but he may have to. That pitch in there for a strike. But he's thrown a complete game here.
Strike two. He's just waving it in there. That's smart, too. That is a smart way of pitching. He knows he doesn't have velocity, so he's just saying, here's a bad in practice pitch. Oh, Smoke. trouble. Trouble. Throws over the first, and that's not going to be in time. And Alabama State has life. That actually turned out to be better than I think that he could have thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lucky they didn't throw it away. Then you end up, doesn't matter. The key is they're going to need to get five or six runners on. And now Randy Flores comes to the plate. Coach is hoping for the pitcher's best friend here. Yeah, double play. Yeah, that's what he's hoping for. And the pitcher's throwing just hard enough to mess him up. Here's a shot, and this is going to be a blooper. It's going to fall. Fair ball. And the bases are loaded. This is a. <laughs> this is. This is what it's all about. This is what Alabama State did yesterday. Trailing a but, bloop single. But give the pitcher credit. They can't square him. Yeah. Okay, this is it. He's seen enough. Coach Shoup going out there He's now. He's got to go get him. He's got to go get him. He hasn't made the sign yet. He doesn't. He'll make it. Well, I tell you what. <laughs> there he is. He just let yep. them know. The pat on the hip. He's telling me, boy, you did as well as we could. You got us to the ninth inning. Raylan Wagner, man, he has. Oh, he's oh, going to leave him out there. <laughs> he's good. Well, Raylan Wagner is going to be left out there. Bases loaded. The tying run is on deck for Alabama State. But, but Coach knows that they haven't squared him. Yeah. I think that's what it's all predicated on. They have not squared him, so he probably can get a ground ball double play. Got a new hitter in the ball game here. I'm thinking he's taking the calculated guess here. Kyle Kiramoto. Look at that, you see, he's changing speed. I'm telling the coaches, he's got to figure out yeah. that, you know, they're all off, off, out of whack against him. Kyle Kiramoto, the junior from Fort Lauderdale. Here's the pitch, swung on foul. Now he's see how him. he's got them all off balance? So that's what coach is figuring. They haven't been able to do it. He's got them off balance. Why go get someone to, that they can square. He just sent the sign in, as a matter of fact, to move over. The catcher. Swung on and miss for strike three. That was a big out. Yeah. Now Ian Matos will come up to pitch. Or come up to bat, rather. That was a big out. One well, down. He's got him on. They can't square him because he's throwing. <laughs> that one in the dirt keeps everybody on the bases. The tying run for Alabama State. It's my man. In the circle. Jack Hay. Jack the man Hay. If someone gets on, he maybe could make Hay. Well, this crowd is really excited. A really great crowd here on this Friday. That pitch just missing for a ball.
Here's a pitch. Swung on, fair ball. It's going to go into left field. They're going to hold the runner up at third, but it's eight to four. And now the tying run at the plate, the winning run on deck. <laughs> this is a funny game. Yeah. Coach, when do you go get him? Uh, well, I understand why. Because he's throwing a pitch that they can't really square. They, he have them off balance. So I would have gone get him a long time ago. But what do you trade? An ace for a jack? Outside for a ball. <laughs> An ace for a jack, huh? Yeah. <laughs> You got to make sure what you're trading for is better than what you got. That's a good pitch. Outside for a ball, two and one. Tying run at the plate. Go ahead, run on deck. The fans sending messages and witnessing this game for themselves. It is an incredible contest. Outside for a ball, three and one, and there's nowhere else for the Hornets to go but home. So if you walk them, walk in. Oh, that home. Home plate you're talking yep. about. Okay, you better specify that. <laughs> and that's a run in for Alabama State. He's looking for the coach to come get him. Finally. Yep, they're going to go get him. Finally. He was trying to see if he could get out of it. Eight and a third innings for this young man. Five runs, seven hits. An incredible performance by Raylan Wagner. Wagner doesn't, you know, of course, you know, if you're a competitor, you don't want to come out, but you understand why now. Yeah, you got to. And Wagner will come out and he will get a much deserved round standing ovation from the FAMU fans. Got a new pitcher. We'll take this break. We'll be right back here on the SWAC Digital Network. We are a limitless future. Opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Well, for Alabama State, 
Two runs are already in this inning. The go-ahead run is at the plate. The winning run is at the plate. Ali LaPred inside for a ball. Pitching for Florida A&M is Zach Maria. He pitched this morning and he also pitched summon relief last night. There's a oh. shot to left field, base hit. Here comes a run, that's Flores. And everybody will stay and it's now eight to six. Talk about an incredible performance. Corey King now coming up to bat. Coach, have you ever seen anything like this? Yes. Well, you've been around for like <laughs> four, 50 years. I've seen it. Swung on, missed foul. You got to think, hit, hit the ball the other way. And hopefully make a mistake inside, you can pull it. But you hit a gap shot here, you're really going to be da dancing in the streets. 8-6. Corey King takes this pitch for a ball. You hit a gap shot here, you're dancing in the streets. Yeah, if it's deep enough and three runs score, this place is going to come unglued. Well, if anything in the gap, they're going to be sending them. Here's the pitch. Swung on, popped up. There's just one out. Infield fly rule. And there's two outs now. Well, it comes down. Well, throw fastball into him, the wrist guy. Yep. Lopez. Come. Lopez has not gotten a hit today, but he has scored a run. Been on base twice. Lopez, you got to think about the condition of his wrist right now and if he can pull it. See, the kid before him was trying to do way too much, and this guy won't let you do that much. You got to take what he gives you. This is how, fam, you got ahead. They took what the pitcher was giving him. You know, you can't overdo it. Here's the pitch. That pitch in there for a strike. The count is one and one. That was the pitch he should have hit. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. Three runs in for Alabama State. Bases are loaded. Matos at third, Hay at second, Lapred at first. Lopez swings and misses, strike two. And now the fam you faithful on their feet. They got to feel good about themselves. They've worked hard to put themselves in this position. Maria needs one more strike. He or doesn't an out. need a strike. He just needs to throw an outside corner. It doesn't have Here's to be a pitch. A strike. Here's a pitch. Strike three. And Alabama State will have to play tomorrow. Maria strikes out Lopez. They say it was oh, foul. Time. time. They said it was time? They say the pitch clock went out. Oh. Wow. It's two and two. The third pace umpire said that the pitch clock had expired. Wow. What we'll a break. We've probably seen a little bit of everything. The key is, it doesn't really matter. It's whether or not Lopez can make it, make him pay for that. It, all of this is not if Lopez doesn't make him pay. All Maria needs is a strike. Or an outside corner. It doesn't have to be a strike. I'm telling you, Lopez is a goner. Here's a pitch outside. Now, he's got to get Lopez. He doesn't want to get the next, face the next guy. Full count. Lopez is his hitter. 
He's got to know the physical disability he's got. Here's the pitch by Maria. Swung on, missed foul. Look at foul. that. You see, look at his head. He's coming off the bat. He's... <laughs> oh, this is where a fastball could hurt him. Guy telling One me. more pitch, Maria. Throw the fastball in there. He can't hit it. He's hurt it. Full count, two outs. Swung on. Hit in the left field. He's this one it. could drop. Is he going to catch it? He does. Yeah. The left fielder for Florida AM, Ben Kim, who took over in the fourth or in the eighth inning, has caught the ball. And Florida AM escapes eight to six in a classic. What a catch out there in left because that one was traveling a little bit of a distance, kind of shading to the yeah. left. Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. Eight to six, our score in a classic. If you're fam, you, you got to feel good about this. Yes, you should. And I tell you what, a fly ball going into left field and going from the sun to the shade even. That's that's an even bigger yeah, dynamic. Yeah, you see what right, the shade yeah, is. Right, right. Here's the, the play one more time, Coach. Look at that. I mean, he, he had, had to, to be on his horse. Yes. Wow. And Ben Kim, who came in in the eighth, makes a big-time catch. Yes. And now this game... Uh, these two teams will play again at noon tomorrow. So there will be Saturday baseball. Well, Charles wanted it. He finally got it. Here, Charles. Charles, take it away, brother. Yeah, here with Sebastian Greco. He just uh, set a program record uh, with home runs. Uh, you had the big knock uh, to break this game open. Yeah, I was just looking for a good pitch to hit. He gave me it and just put a good swing on it. What, what, what sort of pitch was it? What did you see? Uh, it was just a fastball right down the middle. <laughs> so right there. You hit it into that uh, <laughs> in the right center over there, or, or center field, man. That was a yeah. big hit. Uh, what does it say about your team, man? Uh, you guys fought back from adversity yesterday, uh, gave up the big uh, lead, and, and you were able to come back and get the win today. Yeah, I mean, that just shows, hey, we play together, and hey, it's not over till it's over, so we're going to keep fighting, come out tomorrow, and uh, give it our best. Good job. Go celebrate Thank with you. your team, buddy. Grambling will play this evening against Bethune-Cookman, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central. FAMU and Alabama State tomorrow at noon. The winner of tomorrow's game will go to the championship on Sunday. And boy, I see the athletic director down there really giving a great round of applause to the team for just the adversity that they had to overcome and being able to really have what was an outstanding eighth inning for that team. Santoria, they just sent me the winning pitcher. I got uh, Waylon, uh, Raylan Wagner here with me. Hey, buddy, man, you 118 pitches a day. Uh, talk about the grit and effort that you showed out there on the mound. Uh, first off, all glory to God, man. I just knew that if I gave my guys a chance and I kept us in the game, I knew they had my back. So I just, I just left it all out there. That was everything I had, and I knew that my guys had my back, and that's exactly what happened. That's why we came out on top. What's it going to take to continue to go up, advance in this tournament? Execution. That's all it's going to come down to, execution. Big time ABs, big time pitches, making plays. That's how we're going to win this thing tomorrow. Sure thing. Go celebrate. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, Charles. Well, we'll be playing Saturday baseball tomorrow. Unbelievable game. And Grambling Bethune Cookman coming up 7 Eastern, 6 Central. For now, for the coach, Charles Bishop, James Crenshaw, and the entire crew, I'm Santoria Black. We'll see you 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central for Grambling and Bethune Cookman. Always remember, one nation, one people. Peace.